So the state of California tried to pass a law which would require parents to disclose to schools whether they have firearms. Well, that bill was just defeated. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the state of California needs to stop violating our rights to keep and bear arms, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the detail section. So like I said in the intro, a new bill was introduced in California, which would require parents to disclose their firearm ownership to their children's schools. This bill we're going to be talking about in this video is SB 906, which is titled as the School Safety, Mass Casualty Threat, and Firearms Disclosure. When introduced, this bill stated that it would require, on or before January 1st of 2023, the State Department of Education, in consultation with the Department of Justice, to develop model content for use by lo local educational agencies related to a threat or perceived threat of an incident of mass casualties at a school. Using the model content, the bill would require local educational agencies to require the parents or guardians of a pupil to disclose whether any firearm are located at the home of the pupil and to answer questions about the ownership, storage, and accessibility by the pupil of the firearms. The bill would require local educational agencies and schools to include information related to the safe storage of firearms in the annual notification provided to the parents or guardians of the pupil and if a school official is ever alerted or observed any threat or perceived threat of maybe an incident related to a firearm, then they would have to notify law enforcement officers, notify the Department of Justice, and then they would actually take a look and see if maybe the parent of that individual, of that child, actually has a firearm based on all this information that they're going to require that you give a school. The bill would require the investigation and threat assessment to include a review of the parent or guardian's firearms disclosure information that they gave to the school, and then also a search of that child would actually take place as well. A search of the child's like person, their actual body, and then also any property that they have at school. Now, as you just heard, this bill attempted to intrude on the private lives and information of law-abiding gun owners in California. And it did this by forcing them to have to disclose what is otherwise private information just so that kids can actually go to school. One of the most protected areas under the Constitution is your own home and your right to privacy within it. And this bill actually seeks to reach within that privacy through a back door and get information about your firearms ownership as well. The state of California was trying to use the overblown media hype and concerns to find out who actually was in possession of firearms. And they were just trying to use a different means to actually get that information. Also keep in mind that the state of California already has penal codes that would penalize parents if a child ever gains access to a firearm and causes any injury to themselves or others. That law was put in place because the state of California said that it would allegedly prevent these types of harms. So why is the state of California now trying to double up on that law? Well, that's because that penal code does not actually disclose who has firearms and maybe how they're being stored as well. This bill would actually do that. And that's why they want this bill as well. Now, when you look at some of the definitions that are relevant to the implementation of this bill, first, it defines reasonable suspicion to mean articulable facts together with rational inferences from those facts warranting an objective suspicion. It's important for me to note that reasonable suspicion is a step before probable cause. At the point of reasonable suspicion, it only has to appear that a crime may have been committed. The situation escalates to probable cause when it becomes obvious that a crime has most likely been committed. So essentially reasonable suspicion is an easier standard for the school and law enforcement to meet and that's why they're choosing to include that language in this bill. And through this bill, any drawing, social media post, note, really anything related to a firearm or hinting at firearms use would be actually a way that they could use and actually use that as a perceived threat to then search that child, search your information and search other property of the child as well to maybe see if they actually do have a firearm. Now in this world of kids playing video games more, Modern Warfare, Fortnite, Tarkov, first person shooters, then posting, streaming, drawing, talking about firearms more than ever. And really this would be a really easy standard for a school or law enforcement officer to meet because really any drawing, any discussion about a firearm would really lead to them being able to search the child or search your information. Now this bill was a drastic attempt to leverage the education system and children in a way to obtain firearms information. And in fact, this bill was so drastic that even a liberal state of California and a committee in the state legislature said it was way too drastic. Earlier this month, 
the bill was proposed and actually failed in the Senate Education Committee. Now, that is really good news for us here in California. Most often, all these anti-gun legislation bills make it through the process with zero resistance. Almost every time there's an anti-gun bill in the state of California, it is streamlined through the process and it just really hits no road bumps. And really here, we didn't see that that was gonna be the case. It seemed like there was a lot of resistance to this bill and it, that was actually really surprising. So most often any anti-gun legislation makes it through the process without any resistance in the state, but this bill faced significant opposition from California gun owners and we actually got it stopped. Now I do wanna note that this bill is not 100% dead yet. The bill was granted reconsideration for later in the state of California and through the California legislator um, in their later session. So currently this bill was amended to remove a significant portion of the concerning language but the amended bill still has a mechanism where law enforcement, after being notified by a school, can search the DOJ database to see if the parent actually has a registered firearm. The amended language also still allows the searches of your child or other items on the school grounds if there is reasonable suspicion that the child may commit some sort of harmful act with a firearm. The language in regards to that suspicion still remains very broad in the amended bill, where any images, drawings, social media posts, or really th anything in general in relation to firearms can serve as that reasonable suspicion. So it's definitely a positive that this bill was stopped in its drastic form. This means we may be actually making some headway in the state of California. In the past, any anti-gun bill would just breeze through the process and there would be no resistance whatsoever, but it seems there is at least some resistance now and even these types of bills are getting kind of stopped. So kind of positive, we'll see how this plays out. However, we need to keep the pressure on and not let this pass even in its amended form. So please contact your local representatives, let them know that you still don't agree with this bill, that you oppose this bill even in its amended form and that they need to get rid of this and they don't need to let this pass even in its amended form. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Algor's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits that notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So thank you so much for all of your support. Also, I want to mention if you're not currently subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'm hoping to actually reach 300,000 subscribers before my three-year anniversary here on YouTube. That's gonna be in early July. So I think it would be really awesome to actually reach that landmark before my three-year anniversary. So if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. And again, all that really does help this channel. But regardless, as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this is with Built Farm Scholars and the station we maintain Farm Scholars.